GM Vault wants all the free minis. Well, uh, there will be free minis, quote unquote. Uh, not this coming Wednesday, the 9th, but on October 16th, that is the third Wednesday of the month. And that is when we have the community raffle where I give out boxes of minis to people who are in the in the channel and participating in the raffle. So that's that's your opportunity, GM Vault. Uh, and then, of course, in January, I know that's a little ways out still, but in January, uh, when we do our our anniversary, I'll have another um, another giveaway of uh, different things uh, throughout the week as a celebration as we enter into year three of the, the channel. Uh, so, Donnie, thanks again for uh, picking up the boxes. Yeah, I, I hope you can make it out too, GM Vault. I, I, I am trying to announce it on our on our channel and, and uh, to put that out there. So, and y'all can mark it on your calendars too, the third Wednesday of the month. Uh, all right, so we have made two Eloquence Bards, two Heroic Paladins, and now I want to see how well the Unearthed Arcana stuff uh, plays with other classes. And so let's let's have some fun tonight and multi-class, multi-class. <laughs> when we do this, we're going to be making level 20 characters as that's the that's the characters that we've been making because the the paladin set the capstone bar at 20 cuz that's when they're that's when their subclass gets its last uh, bit of goodies. So we're going to make a level 20 multi-class character. Our first one will make an Eloquence Bard. Whatever we end up multi-classing into isn't going to be a Paladin. Uh, and it's obviously not going to be another Bard. Uh, and let's just have fun with it. Now, we are going to be using uh, just the Player's Handbook. Again, we're keeping things simple, but we've made awesome characters. Uh, by doing so, we're, we're certainly not out anything in that regard. Um, and when we split the levels, it should at least be a 50-50 split with us starting with Bard and going into something else for purposes of the multi-class, uh, you know, the, the features you get afterwards. Um, however, I would prefer to have uh, if not equal, then dominant levels in Bard over whatever we splash into. And uh, to get us going, we're going to open our handy-dandy character creation sheet here. And uh, to, to start us out, uh, GM Vault, would you please type exclamation point 1D100? Twenty-seven. So we have a female character, and now for the race, uh, Hark. Would you give me a D ten roll? Lands on a seven. Seven is a halfling, not a half elf. But all right, so we have a halfling. Uh, cybernetic Elithid, could you give me a, a, a D4 roll? Exclamation point, 1D4. Evens. All right, so we have a female stout halfling. Female stout halfling. So we are small, S-M-O-L. Uh, next up, Donnie, would you please roll a percentile for me? Punt the lala out. Oh, sheeps ban that man. Ban him. <laughs> 79. Uh, Donnie is giving us a neutral evil character.
a neutral evil female stout halfling. Uh, I mean, ultimately level 20, but we're, we're going to split that. <laughs> Go on, get, get on out now. <laughs> Don't you come back now, cheer. Uh, oh, sheeps, can you roll a percentile for me, please? It's because we're overpowered. It's okay to be jealous, cybernetic illithid. Exclamation point 1D100. Eighty five, hey! So we're gonna replace two of our ASIs with feats. And so actually we have uh bard class stuff and then whatever we're getting from our other and then we have our I should just change this instead of archetype uh to just call it subclass um to, to, that'll go in the to-do list and then of course we have our whatever there we go Okay, now for our background. Uh, Coffee Cat, would you roll me a d20, please? We'll see if Coffee Cat gives us... A yep, there we go. So, Coffee Cat's breaking it up for us. Uh, 15. So, Coffee Cat, apparently you wanted a sailor. She is a sailor. And then we'll choose if she either gets ship's passage or bad reputation, uh, well, given her, uh, given her demeanor. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, I will roll real quickly. 2d8. And 3d6 for her personality traits, ideal, bond, and flaw. So we have 1, 3, 4, 3, 3. 1, 3, 4, 3, 3. Very good. We're getting some good placeholders. Our character is starting to take form from the mists of creation. Now. Here we go. This is where we decide. This is where we decide what the subclass is going to be. Um, so before this is rolled, and uh, Black Wolf, I'll ask for you to roll a D10. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. What do you think her? Uh, what do you think her multi-class is going to be? Remember, uh, uh, Paladin and Bard are off the table. Hey, Raven. So there's ten other options remaining. This is for uh, for right to say. I called it. Black Wolf, you think we're going to get a druid? Hark is uh, locking in for a fighter. Trefus wants a rogue. Raven wants a rogue also. All right, Black Wolf. Will you please type exclamation point 1D10? Alithid is getting in at the last second with a monk. Eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A sorcerer. All right. Uh, Raven, will you please type exclamation point one D four? Well, I skipped over Ranger and Paladin because we're we're saving that for she's already a bard. I'm sorry, we we, we skip Bard because she's already a bard. I skip Paladin because we're gonna make the uh, the Bard Paladin blend at the end of the night. Uh, 
Uh, stops on a one. So we have a Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. All right, so we have Bard, Sork, um, Eloquence, Slash, Durgan. All right, now, neither Bards nor Sorcerers have class features that need to be randomly rolled, so we get to skip over this part. All right, we have a halfling. Let's go to the halfling stats. Uh, Furbolg works, right? <laughs> uh, half elf, uh, ghostwise halfling, lightfoot. There's stout halfling. Uh, bard first, sorcerer second. Yes. All right, uh, disfemist. Would you please roll? Uh, would you please type exclamation point? 1D100. Let's find out how old she is. Stops on a 68. So we have a middle-aged halfling. And so for a halfling, middle age is 102 plus 1D59 years. So I'm going to make a 59-sided die, and then we're going to add uh, 102 to it and roll. Our total is 115. So she is 115 years old. Well, Donnie, I hope you feel better. Thanks for stopping by, for chatting, uh, and of, of course, thank you for picking up a couple boxes of Avernus. Congrats on your rare pull from those, and um, you know, hey, listen, enjoy, and uh, if you if you want to come back and chat, we're here. If you got to get some sleep and recover, make sure you take care of yourself. Uh, I'm sorry you're feeling under the weather too, Raven. <laughs> hey, the, you know it happens at conventions and game stores, which is why if you're ever if you ever have a cold, it's okay to call off and not play D and D with other people because you might infect them too. Because we're all we're all sitting at the same table, breathing uh, breathing the same air. And cat. All right, now her base height is uh, two foot seven. We're gonna roll two d four. We're adding six inches to her height, so she is three feet and one inch tall. And then we're going to take that same six, multiply it by one, and add that to her base weight of thirty five. So she is forty one pounds. Excellent. We have our placeholders. And so now it's time for those of you who play along at home, open up your uh, open up your player's handbooks to chapter four, as that talks about backgrounds for your characters. Uh, I never got Confunk, Black Wolf, so you must have got it from someone else. I took my vitamins and I stayed healthy, uh, and I was uh, I, I I I did my best not to uh, not to get myself infected. Oh, you caught it for me, not from me. Oh, all right, thank you. Ooh. Thank you for jumping on that grenade. Those are some good scratches, huh, bud? I loosen up a hairball. Yeah. All right, so here's our player's handbook. Conveniently already open at chapter four. It's like I knew we were going to be doing this. Rigged. Rigged. How did I know that we would need this chapter? 
We're going to scroll through and get to the Sailor section. Sage, then Sailor. All right, let's find out more about our, our Char Actor. I'm going to scoot this off to the side so we have an easier time reading the player's handbook. Yep, I'm a hacker. Now, as a sailor, we get proficiency in athletics and perception. We are also going to get some tool proficiencies. Uh, those of... Here, bud. I got I to gotta reach through. Thank you. Navigator's tools and vehicles water. We're going to get a blaying pin, which is effectively a club. Uh, or, you know, or some other, like, memorable part of a ship that we served or are serving on. And that uh, we can use to bludgeon people. Uh, so we get a club. Hi, bud. You're exact... Oh, hi. Yeah, I know you want to lay down and just be on everything. Ugh. We have 50 feet of silk rope. Ah, a lucky charm. And we're going to... Our lucky charm is trinket number something or another. And this could very well play into her as a character, her beliefs, or what set her on this path. Uh, next up, we have uh, some common clothes. And a belt pouch. That contains ten gold pieces. Now, uh, we, we can consider ship's passage. Of course, we can also uh, consider bad reputation. But really, I think until we find out more about her personality, that will really help define which background feature she would be receiving. So let's discover more about her. Let's get our character's character. Personality trait number one. My friends know they can rely on me no matter what. We're very dependable. Now, of course, I mean, who are our friends? Well, I guess we'll find out a little bit more. Her second personality trait is number three. I enjoy sailing into new ports and making new friends over a flagon of ale. Her ideal is number four. Mastery. I'm a predator and the other ships on the sea are my prey. So she seems to have a, a dominant streak to her. Her bond is number three. I'll always remember my first ship. Her first ship that she served on, the first ship that she plundered, the first ship that she sank, the first ship she bought. Whatever it is, She'll always remember it. Could have been the first ship where she had to kill someone, whether in self-defense or as an act of aggression. And lastly, her flaw is number three, as we are all flawed creatures, my friends. And number three translates to... Once someone questions my courage... I never back down, no matter how dangerous the situation. Nobody calls me chicken. <laughs> she so she'll never forget the first mutiny that she uh, she led or partook in. That could be a two, Raven. All right, so she's been around a while. 
uh, her friends can rely on her no matter what. Um, and that, I guess, is even in the face of having her question cur uh, her uh, courage questioned. She enjoys sailing the new par uh, ports and making new friends over a flag and a veil. Doesn't necessarily mean that she might not, uh, you know, alleviate someone of some coin or uh, try and get information. Maybe she's in cahoots with our blackmailer. We'll see. Martina McFly, says Raz. And she is. She wants to be a master, or in this case, a mistress of the seas. There's not a ship that can out, uh, out, you know, outpace her, uh, that can stay afloat if she decides it needs to be sunk. Uh, there's not a ship that she can't captain. Taking off. All right. Bye. Hey, you put that away. Thank you. That's a little better now. <laughs> there he goes. So now that here's here's the good question. If she started out as a bard, she was probably aboard the ship, uh, maybe for entertainment. You know, she could sing a, a good sea shanty. Uh, maybe she, uh, you know, maybe she could dance. Maybe she could carouse. Uh, you know, uh, not only is she a sailor, you know, she she knows how to work the rigging. D yet, Phoenix, she might have even uh, started out as a ship slave. You know, someone who was uh, someone who was forced to uh, to work for little or no pay. Uh, someone who, uh, you know, we'll just say was uh, you know the captain's belly warmer. Um, you know, she she might have had a, a rough a rough time of it, which may very well have left this uh, this mark on her. Why she is now a very self centered person. Remember, when it says neutral, hey daily, welcome. When it says evil, it doesn't mean that she wants to plot to burn down orphanages and kick puppies everywhere she goes. This is simply that she prioritizes herself first. My needs are more important. I, my goals are more important. And you know what? My goals may help other people, but I, I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing this to survive. I'm doing this because I am the predator of the seas. You know, and maybe maybe uh, if it was uh, her circumstances were born out of, uh, you know, crime or tragedy, being a slave or something else, um, it could be, you know, she has that never again. You know, and the next person who tries to lay a hand on me, they're they're going to lose a finger. Or, you know what, I'm already at that height for most other people. Uh, sailor's going to lose their, uh, you know, sailor's going to lose their rigging if he tries anything with me. That could possibly be uh, the case, too. I, I did, Raz, if it means anything. Uh, Sierra says, certainly would make the first ship memorable. Not in a good way, but hard to forget. I agree, Sierra. Ooh, spicy pork chops, Raven, huh? No, our, our blackmailer doesn't have a missing finger. Uh, this this is a, a character, a multi-class character we started to make, Raven. And so it, it seems like, you know what? She's a no-nonsense woman, right? Her friends can rely on her. And so if she's going to do something, whether she's been challenged or not, you know, again, you could be a hard-ass and have friends. You can be rude, you could be a rude, crude dude or dudette and still have friends that rely on you, especially if you are a sailor. If you want to be a captain, you want to master ships. Your crew could very well be your friends. So my crew know that they can rely on me. And you know what? I will sail I will sail them to hell and back. <laughs> but they know that we're that, you know, that they can count on me to get the job done. Maybe I as the captain take on the tasks that are unsavory to save my crew. And so this could lead to why she might have the bad reputation instead of the ship's passage. That said, I still think we have a strong case for her having ship's passage. 
because she has mastered ships. I think that she's a very well-known person. Uh, people know her reputation, know who she is and what she's gone through and what she's doing. You're fine, Raz. <laughs> And so the thing to consider, if she started out as a bard, as a performer, as someone who sung, whose very soul, you know, she could express through instruments or singing or dancing or some other kind of performance. Where did this draconic sorcerer bloodline come from? Was it... On the high seas, they encountered an arcane storm, and she was struck by magic lightning. Was it, uh, maybe she made a bargain with a dragon, and the dragon, um, you know, the dragon, uh, saved her from her circumstances, but the dragon left its mark on her. Or the dragon left a part of itself. We're, we're talking in context. It left a part of itself in her, such that it it it's a residual thing. It's it's almost a bond with the dragon. Uh, where you know it's not quite like a warlock, but a dragon blooded sorcerer could very well have some kind of a uh, a covenant like that, where a dragon shared its blood or uh, other other methods of. Uh, uh, physical infusion here with her such that the magic from the dragon is carried with her and so she could act as an agent of this dragon so maybe she didn't have this before there's not a drop of blood of dragon blood in her halfling uh, line anywhere but she made a, a pact of sorts or she um, or she encountered a dragon or she got a I don't know a cursed piece of treasure that just suddenly um, you know, it, it looked like a, a, a magic lamp that was a dragon, and she's like, oh, a wish, and she rubbed it, and suddenly, like, draconic magic spilled out and infused her like gamma rays in a Marvel comic, giving her giving her mutant powers, because that's what sorcerers are. Sorcerers are mutants. I mean, Cyclops has the magic eye beams, effectively. You know, Hulk has magic strength, um, and so it could be something like that. Uh, yes, cybernetic. Yeah, you very well could. Uh, during a fight that uh, she was bathed in uh, dragon or dragonborn fire, and it did nothing. So maybe it's just that you know one in eleven billion chance that uh, her gene, uh, her genes just allowed her to, um, yeah, uh, just showed that there was a manifestation. Treffa says, what if it's in her bloodline but randomly manifests so not everyone in her family can do it? Yeah, I, someone someone in her family could have had a dalliance with a dragon um, in some way or been subjected to experiments. I like that. It was always in the blood and some other incident made it burst forth. So she was, uh, and, and so she was in a, a state of extreme... Because, uh, look, again, if we're talking mutants or something, uh, something was happening. Uh, very good, very bad, something stressful, something like combat, uh, like what Raven was talking about. Uh, she didn't realize that, uh, you know, uh, you know, she was in combat and, uh, and this was the first time maybe she was severely injured and a cutlass from a raiding ship, uh, like cut her down her arm. And, uh, and she was surprised to see that just below the surface of her skin, was a sheen of uh, dragon scales of some kind. She carries a family heirloom that's been enchanted if she loses it. And you know what? We'll we'll end up rolling for that because that, that could be her lucky charm as a sailor, Phoenix. Uh, so let's do this. Oh, sheeps, you say that your sorcerer is going through this? Oh, sheeps, would you please roll a d10? To find out what kind of a sorcerer a dragon or what dragon blood uh, flows through her. Rolls on a one. Uh, let's look real quick. Real quick like. Um, black dragon. A black dragon, apparently.
And that's your sorcerer too? Oh, sheeps, you're you're rigging this. I knew it. <laughs> and then uh, Phoenix, for the heirloom, because you brought that up, would you please roll a percentile for me? Oh, sheeps has been the puppet master this whole time. Exclamation point one D one hundred. Stops on a 31. So let's check out what's her lucky charm as Phoenix was prompting. This could be a family heirloom. Maybe this could be a, a clue or evidence that she carried the blood of a black dragon in her veins. Uh, we have to go to chapter 5 and scroll down a little bit. Sorry, this is going to flash a little bit for anyone sensitive to that. All right, 31. A silver badge in the shape of a five-pointed star. Oh, you're fine, Phoenix. Don't worry. A silver badge in the shape of a five-pointed star. What do you say in 04, Raven? I'm thinking if this is a family heirloom, if this is her lucky charm. Hey, Raven, you and I are thinking the same thing. What if? Uh, what if the family has passed this down and perhaps of the five points on, this, on the silver background, uh, you have red, green, blue, and white. But black is missing. Or black is the top of the, uh, or black is the top of the star. And so that could mean that out there are other families who carry these badges as kind of a, a wink and a, and a nudge to others. So this could be proof. This could be proof of their lineage at, uh, in a very subtle fashion. And maybe it's only passed down to family that has manifested these powers. I like it. I like it a lot. If we want to play artistically, Phoenix, we certainly can. Uh, what, what Raven uh, was thinking and I was thinking, as there are five chromatic dragons, black, white, blue, green, and red... Uh, that it was uh, it was just signifying the black dragon blood. Not that we can't be creative and use uh, black as negative space, or um, or it's a mixture of everything. I love this creative process, everyone. Do you see how we can have anything be anything? We should never feel constrained, especially in fifth edition here. And so she came aboard as a talented young lass, uh, perhaps put into dire circumstances or not. Doesn't have to be. And at some point, you know, almost like um, if any of you uh, have been watching the Tuesday games, we had a character somewhat like this. Uh, Macabre Derek was playing a character named Selter. Selter was a very dominant uh, black dragonborn who said, you know what? I am a dragon. And so you don't think so? You know, take a long walk off a, a short pier, Buster Brown. I know I'm putting that in a PG, not even in just a PG way. Uh, Selter was definitely not PG. Um, and, uh, and so she was very dominant. She said, I am a dragon. I have dragon's blood in me. You know, I am the descendants of these mighty beasts. And so, too, could this uh, neutral evil, this, this dominance. I may, be a, I may be in a halfling body, but I am a dragon. The blood of dragons flows through me. I manifest their power, their radiance. 
Why else am I so talented? Why else am I so charming? That's why I must master others, as dragons have been masters over us in the past. Maybe she doesn't know what it means because she found it with her mother's stuff after she passed. Trephus, excellent backstory creation. Excellent. Sierra says family kicks their kids into the into dire circumstances as a sink or swim kind of thing. Turns out her halfling discovered her dragon heritage and swum better than most. Ah, so yeah, she could even be bitter against her family for, you know, uh, like selling her to the sea or whatever. You know, and say, you know, don't come back for 10 years because uh, maybe that's the test. Maybe that's, that is the test to see if the blood has been passed down to the next generation. And so of the, you know, maybe there's 10 kids in the family, you know? Uh, and so maybe she's the one that, uh, you know, has proven that she carries the, the mark of the dragon. I, I really like these ideas. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to build a bard first. Actually, we should determine where uh, where we're going to split. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. One step prior to that, we got to make her a halfling first. Yeah, ah, I love this picture. Absolutely. What a wonderful little halfling. And by the way, I, I don't know if you see this, but she has a... Uh, she has a... It, well, it, I, I believe that's like a sheep's head right there. Uh, it's engraved into her. Um, if not, it, it might be a devil's head. It might be a devil's head. And then it looks like she has a little cat earring. If you look over here. <laughs> oh, sheep says, oh, hey, it me. Might be a ram's head, yeah. All right, so we we know her background, right? We have, it's not that she's she's not antisocial. She's definitely rough and tumble. She can, you know, whatever, burp, fart, and cuss with the best of them. She probably has to to give orders on a ship. Um, but she is very ambitious, with her own goals set forward first. All right, as a halfling, our dex goes up by two. Our speed is 25 feet, so that's going to give us 12, 12, and zero for climb, swim, and fly. We are lucky. When you roll a one on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. We're also brave, so we have advantages uh, versus being frightened. We also get halfling nimbleness. You can move through the space of a creature that's uh, of a size larger than yours. We can speak common and halfling. And now for the sub race, she is a stout. She is a stout halfling. As a stout halfling, you're hardier than uh, average and have some resistance to poison. Some say that stouts have dwarven blood. In the Forgotten Realms, these halflings are called strong hearts. And they're most common in the south. This reminds me of a meme saying that dwarves are just dummy thick halflings. Uh, and so a stout halfling in this case would be, uh, you know, apparently like a cousin uh, of, of uh, perhaps. Uh, so we get our constitution score increases by one. And we have stout resilience. You have advantage on saving throws against poison and have resistance against poison damage. So up here in our IRV for immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities, at poison, I'm going to click resistance. And we also have uh, advantages versus poison. All right. So now we are a halfling. And you know what that means, too? It means that despite her stature, she could probably outdrink most people because she's resistant to the alcohol effects. 
which is very good too if you want to try and carouse or if you want to try and play act like you're drunk to get someone into a more vulnerable state and then strike. You know, like, all right, you know, you say, give me the map or, you know, hand over the prisoners and because the person got drunk thinking that they're going to outdo you. And meanwhile, you're, you're this little, you know, you're this little uh, the little halfling that's resistant to, to this. Not that she can't get drunk. I mean, just like Wolverine can get drunk, but oof, it doesn't last long. And he's got to pound the, 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 the hard stuff uh, for it to, you know, take effect before his healing factor, uh, you know, uh, gets it out of his system. Deadpool, well, Deadpool has a healing factor. Uh, he, I, he can, I, I think he could also just get drunk, but it, it doesn't last long, or it would take an insane amount of, uh, of alcohol. I mean, he'd probably have to have alcohol, uh, he'd have to, he'd have to have blood in his alcohol stream, uh, instead of the other way around, uh, for it to affect him. All right, now that we have our racial features, we are going to build a bard. And I'm going to keep this open because let's determine where the split is going to be. Now, if we look at the capstone, Infectious Inspiration is a 14th level. So if we stick with this, 14th level, we would get our last Eloquence. Our last Eloquence um, uh, feature. Which would mean that we would have six levels of Sorcerer. And if we look here, uh, Bard 14, we would get Magical Secrets, our, our second dose of Magical Secrets. Um, his is stronger than Wolvie's. His healing factor outright prevents his cancer from killing him. Or you can go off the Thanos curse. Uh, what is that, Raven? And if we do the, if we split it at 14 and 6, because the bard is going to be dominant, equal or dominant to sorcerer, we would get a sorceress origin feature at 6th level if we split it this way. Well, good morning to you, Santa. That's right, Marvel in my Sunday morning D&D, heresy. This might work. This might work well because not only would we get our capstone for a bard, we would also uh, at least end we on our twentieth level. We would also get another sorceress origin feature. Which is elemental affinity, and that, that would help really prove that she is a black dragon. So why don't we do that, everyone? We're going to split this at 14 slash 6. <laughs> oh, gotcha, Raven. So with this, you know, I'm thinking then... I'm thinking if she owns a ship, she doesn't, uh, she gets ship's passage. I think she has the bad reputation and it doesn't even have to be bad. It's just that everyone knows her and knows not to mess with her, you know, because she's the black dragon of the sea or whatever the, um, the, uh, I don't know, lady, lady worm or something like that. Why do you hate drawing armor, Coffee? Uh, yes, uh, the original, yeah, the the original Infinity Saga uh, was about Thanos uh, wishing to impress Lady Death. You are correct, Raven. Unless it's plate, it's boring. Oh, it doesn't have to be. Heck, 
let's uh i I'll, I'll show you real quick let's go back to it um we were just uh if you didn't see here i mean check out the leather uh right you can engrave leather you could stud leather um there's a lot you can do with light armor uh or if you want to represent something in different ways um you know so for her she has these designs that are and you can also paint leather too or hide or if you want to make something the equivalent of wood um you know you can have smooth patches you can have a bunch of stitches uh you can have uh you, you can still kind of scallop uh coffee do you remember my gauntlet my leather gauntlet oh okay <gasps> uh oh you haven't all right well coffee you're gonna see it at the end of the month for any of you who haven't seen my my leather gauntlet you you will Good ideas for making chainmail interesting. Uh, you can always have things like uh, ribbons or patches. Uh, you could uh, you could show that uh, you know if there has been combat damage in the past, some uh, some streaks of rings are shinier than others, or uh, or the rings can be painted. Maybe you have uh, maybe you have areas where the rings are larger or smaller. Uh, maybe the ring mail is actually not super fine but are just very large connected. So, uh, so it's like someone's wrapped in a chain Would that, uh, that seems kind of like a badass idea. So your, your chain mail is chain. Maybe you can, uh, you know, as you, you, you wrap it in such a way that, you know, it has the, the mechanical donning and doffing effects, but maybe if you need chain, you just, pff, you, you take it off. And yeah. And also you, you can just put a tabard over the chain mail too. Katniss Cullen 24, thank you for the follow. Oh, thank you then. Spell out dwarven obscenities in silver links, says Sierra. <laughs> you, you always wonder, did why did the why did the the armors the dwarven armor smith ask if you could read dwarven? <laughs> and he seemed amused that you said you couldn't. Well, coffee. There, there's plenty of creative minds in here, so hopefully we can help uh, infuse ideas uh, into your noggin. Oh well, well, thank you for uh, for allowing for that, Katniss, and uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, it's something that you know, like uh, what allergies or something that'll go away. Yes, yeah, you only think that symbol means brave. Just remember, anything that Katniss pulls are actually yours, Raven. The cat <laughs> that was a firm no. It may have been in lowercase letters, but there was a tone to that no. <laughs> Any of Katniss's pulls are Katniss's, huh? All right. Let's go to a bard. Remember, we're building a bard first, and we're going to uh, build 14 levels of bard. Um, so we, uh, bards are a D8 hit die class. And so we get 14 of them because we have 14 levels of it. Funny how that works. We are going to get uh, light armor proficiency. And as for weapons, I'm just going to put bard weapons. Cause it's a curated list that you can reference in the player's handbook. Uh, we do get three musical instruments of our choice. And, uh, you can always talk to your DM, maybe, you know, uh, dancing or humming or singing or pantomiming or something might count as an instrument for performance uh, purposes. Our saving throws are going to be dexterity and charisma, at least our proficiency with them. And then we are going to get to choose any three skills. Well, we already have athletics and perception. I think with what we were saying, 
performance absolutely would be a part of this, as well as intimidation. My friends know they can rely on me. I enjoy sailing into new ports and making a new friends over a flag and a veil. Um, I'll remember my first ship, Mastery. Uh, I'm Predator. I am a Predator, and the other ships are my prey. Once someone questions my courage, I never back down, no matter how dangerous. Uh, that would... I think that kind of ability to make friends and also to really be outwardly braggadocious would come through... You know, maybe performance, maybe persuasion. We already have athletics. Survival actually might be a good one for her. You know, if you're sailing, you need to uh, you need to find water and food to endure to overcome circumstances. Let's do survival. I think that makes a lot of sense. She's getting the raptor and the unicorn. I always think of her when spending money, except those dragons, those be mine. <laughs> uh, very well, Katniss. Uh, uh, make sure you remind me uh, anytime that he pulls a unicorn. Yeah, exactly, Sierra. I think survival makes a ton of sense. Cadis, did you get to see me pop any of uh, any boxes for uh, Raven at all? All right, now our proficiency bonus is going to be a plus six, as proficiency is based on character level, not class level. So we are a level 20 character despite being a level 14 bard. Uh, we are going to know four sorcerer cantrips. I'm not going to put these here because we're going to get even more cantrips uh, with sor. Did I say? I mean, uh, four bard cantrips because we're going to get even more sorcerer cantrips too. So down here, I'm going to put uh, bard one, bard two, bard three, bard four. And then I'm going to peek real quick at Sorcerer. At 6th level, we have 5 cantrips. Oof. We're, we're actually going to run out of space here. So we'll put Sorcerer 1. Sorcerer 2. Sorcerer 3, 4, and 5. Okay, let's head back to Bard. Uh, starting equipment, I'm not even going to worry about that. She's level 20. Uh, who knows what she has by that point in time. Not going to worry about it. Spell casting? Uh, well, you know, she's actually going to end up with uh, with all, all of this because both Bards and Sorcerers are... Um, are... Uh, Full, no, at, oh, hang on. Am I jumping ahead of myself? Let's get to that. We're going to get to the spell slots and everything in a little bit because we're, we're going to multi-class. I don't want to get ahead of myself and end up confusing something, uh, including myself. All right, so we're going to get Bardic Inspiration. Uh, in fact, for this one, it's probably better to put it here. Bardic inspiration uh, charisma per rest and we at level 14 are going to be rolling a d10 this is this is going to be five times per rest because she her charisma is going to be maxed out we are also going to be a Jill of all trades. So any skills in which we are not proficient, we get half proficiency. Our Bardic College, not worried about that yet. Expertise, uh, we are going to be an expert in four skills. 
Well, we have five. So this is probably going to be... You know, uh, athletics is something kind of passive to her. I would say performance, intimidation, survival, and perception would be her expertise. Oh, uh, excellent, Cat. Uh, I hope that you two enjoyed watching that. Phoenix says, other way around in our house, I'm a dragon, so I claim them as kin. <laughs> All right, Raven, no problem. Ooh, what kind of salsa did you get, O'Sheeps? No problem, Cat. You're fine. Uh, ASIs. Well, we are. Uh, well, see, this is good. this is going to be an interesting split, as we get ASIs at four, eight, twelve. But we're gonna miss because we don't have a sixteen in that level. And we're gonna get one as a sorcerer because we get one at four. So we're only going to get four ASIs instead of the normal five that a level 20 character gets because of the way that the multi-classing lines up. And of those four, two of them are going to become feats. Uh, we have Font of Inspiration. Uh, regain all your uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a long or short rest. We also get Counter Charm. And we're going to get Magical Secrets. We're going to get two spells from any, from any class at 10 and another two at 14. And so we're actually just going to... We'll sneak these down here. Uh, Magical Secrets, 10. And then we're going to get two at 14. So there we go. Now, for the subclass, the Unearthed Arcana Eloquence portion, Universal Speech... You've gained the ability to speak and reason with any creature. This is fish. This is dolphins. This is just really thick, uh, thick skulled sailors. Uh, this is uh, dwarves and, and durgans. And if it counts as a creature, you can speak to it. Um, you you uh, use your bardic inspiration for this. We also get soothing words, which allows us to cast calm emotions without expending a spell slot. And we're going to be able to do this uh, a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier. And so, Soothing Words... Soothing Words is going to give us Calm Emotions. This is, an, this is definitely going to be uh, five times uh, per long rest. For free. Before I go, I want to do this as well. I don't have many followers, but since you're being hosted... Second on my list with only uh, Total Party Chill in front of you. Oh, you're hosting me on your channel, Raven. Thank you. All right. Yay. Hey, hey, raid. Turn any combat into a social encounter and ruin your DM's day. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a very social, very RP bardic uh, college. Um, a subclass. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Come aboard. Actually, yeah, we're talking about a sailor. Yeah, no problem, Raven. Thank you. Your tongue is literally on fire, oh sheeps. Is that what you're saying? Usually, <laughs> usually they're liars. It's never this hot. What have you done, O'Sheeps? 
So we get soothing words and universal speech. Uh, for sure, she's a captain of a ship. She can talk to anyone, including, you know, you, fish. Hop aboard your dinner. Okay. Now we get to something that is... I, I think it does seem very powerful. Comma, however, comma. Our level three features are background stuff, roleplay stuff. And you can't really account for that in a power curve. So I think to help this to help this subclass keep up is why we see undeniable logic be very powerful. As with this, the creature takes psychic damage and you force disadvantage on the next saving throw as a bonus action, which could even include to force a saving throw then to one of your spells, like uh, Irresistible Dance or uh, Hideous Laughter or Fireball. A wombo combo. So, undeniable logic, you go, no you! And then... And, and the person is so baffled at the no you that just the fire washes over them. Or, the creature regains hit points equal to the number you roll in the Bardic Inspiration die, and the creature has advantage on the next saving throw. So, you know, one of the party members goes down, even if it's a one, a one resets their death saving throws and gets them conscious again. So you, pick yourself up off the deck and get back to work. And then, you know, when, when the next spell comes in, they get advantage and they, boo, they dodge out of the way of the fireball that would have knocked them back out. So, undeniable logic is very powerful and very flexible. And lastly, we get Infectious Inspiration. And this lets you juggle your, your Bardic Inspiration die. When a creature adds one of your Bardic Inspiration dice to its ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, and the roll fails, the creature can keep the Bardic Inspiration die. In addition, when a creature adds one of your Bardic Inspiration dice to its ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, and the roll succeeds, you can use your reaction to encourage a different creature, other than yourself, that can hear you within 60 feet of you, giving it a Bardic Inspiration die without expending any of your Bardic Inspiration uses. And so this would also be uh, five per long rest. So you're spreading the, the help around. Excellent. Now we're going to go back to the player's handbook. And uh, before we add Sorcerer, I do want to go over when we multi-class... Remember that you must have a minimum ability score in your current class and in the class into which you wish to go into at that point in time. Sorcerer is 13 and Bard is 13. It stacks up. And so we got to make sure that at level two or whenever, you know, whenever we'd mix it, we're making the ultimate product with the workshop that we have a charisma of 13. I think that's going to be easily accomplished. Um, now... By going into Sorcerer, you see that we do not get any of the Sorcerer proficiencies that we you would normally get if you're starting as a Sorcerer. What that is going to mean, then, is for uh, spellcasting here, you determine your available spell slots by adding together all your levels in Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, and Wizard. Um, and so when we do that, we get 20. And so here we see a 20th level multi-class character that is on the chart as Bard and Sorcerer gets the full spread. Four, three, 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 two, two, one, and one. Now, just because we have the slots doesn't mean that we have the super high-end spells that go with it, but we can get spells that we can voo, accelerate through higher spell slots. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to Sorcerer. Being a Sorcerer of 6th level, we have... We get Sorcery Points. And at 6th level, we get 6 of them. Isn't that cool? 
We are also a D6 hit die class. So you'll notice over here on this character sheet, their uh, hit die are split into two to allow for easier multi-classing. Now, if a sorcerer was a D8, we could just put them all together because it doesn't matter. However, if we do it, it choose to expend hit dice on a short rest or a long rest, we can choose from which pool we want to pull hit points first. No, we didn't. We, we dipped Sorcerer from our Bard. All right, class features. Uh, well, our feature, uh, the, what, uh, we get the hit points. Our proficiencies, remember, we do not get any of these proficiencies for multi-classing. Now, we are going to get uh, six, or I'm sorry, five cantrips. And uh, in the spells known, we're going to get two in a second here. For being a sorcerer, uh, we are also going to have Font of Magic, which allows us to shuffle our sorcery points and do some cool stuff with it. Um, I would urge you to read it. It's in the player's handbook. As this is a workshop to build a character, I don't want to go over all of the minutia. We are also going to be getting Meta Magic. And at level six, we're going to have two different kinds of of meta magic. Now, normally, I would say, I would say, based on, uh, based on her sort of dominant personality, heightened spell would be a uh, meta magic that she take. However, her bard levels gives her. Um, that effect by forcing disadvantage. <laughs> My Nusha, no, your, no, your Nusha. <laughs> my friends will know they can rely on me I enjoy sailing the new ports and making new friends I'm a predator the other ships are my prey so instead of heightened spell perhaps empowered spell once someone questions my courage I never back down no matter how dangerous so perhaps in that case extended spell to have longer duration to endure everything that is going on for the challenge extended spell and empowered spell are probably going to be the meta magic that she take based on her personality uh 14 bard six sorcerer Okay, now for our Draconic Ancestry from our archetype. Uh, first level, choose one type of dragon. Well, we had rolled, uh, well, oh, sheep's rolled a black dragon. You can speak, read, and write Draconic. Additionally, whenever you make a charisma check when interacting with Durgans, your proficiency bonus is doubled when it applies to the check. Uh, so, up here we speak common, halfling, and Draconic. Yes, and uh, level, a 14 Eloquence Bard and 6 Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. We have Draconic Resilience. As magic flows through your body, it causes physical traits of Dragon Ancestors to emerge. At first level, your hit point maximum increases by 1 and increases by 1 again whenever you gain a level in this class. Additionally, parts of your skin are covered by a thin sheen of dragon-like scales. When you aren't wearing armor, your AC equals 13 plus your dex mod. So again, she has she has the black dragon scales that are a part of her. And lastly, uh, well here I'm gonna put draconic 
Resilience. We also get Elemental Affinity. When you cast a spell that deals damage to the type associated with your Draconic Ancestry, add your, uh, your Charisma modifier to that damage. At the same time, you can spend one Sorcery Point to gain resistance to that damage type for one hour. So we can become resistant to acid damage as well. Yeah, yeah, so she would favor she would favor acid spells for sure, bubonic one. Now, before we drop in Um oop, I'm gonna put the bad reputation here. And I'm gonna take that out of the background up here. Before we drop in her scores, something else to consider is two of her four ASIs are going to be feats. And so we're going to go back to chapter six and let's talk about the feats that you think someone like this would take. My friends know they can rely on me. I enjoy sailing to new ports and making new friends over a flagon of ale. I'm a predator and the other ships uh, on the sea are my prey. I'll always remember my first ship, and once someone questions my courage, I never back down, no matter how dangerous the situation. Part of me wants to say that she is an inspiring leader, especially as a captain of a ship. You can spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up their resolve to fight. When you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures, which can include yourself, within 30 feet of you who can see or hear you and who understand you. And of course, that could be anyone because of our universal speech. That could be fish. That that could be a dog. Um, you know, th that could be our whatever. If we have a parrot on our shoulder or something, we can inspire our parrot uh, or our pet crab. Each creature can gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. Any creature can't gain temporary or a creature can't gain temporary hit points from this feat again until it's finished a shorter long rest. I think inspiring leader would be one of her two feats. Um, as well. I don't, especially because she's a halfling, she already has a form of lucky. I normally don't hand out lucky as a feat because it's so universally good or applicable that in, we've done it with one character in the over one and a half years we've been making random characters because for him, it's super was like... It just, it absolutely fit. Everything just in the cosmos aligned. You know, something like Warcaster could work as a bard says you know since we can wield uh, a weapon now this kind of bard is definitely more of a backline bard so mm, maybe warcaster but you do get advantage on constitution saving throws to maintain concentration um oh but that's also when a hostile creature's movement provokes an opportunity attack from you you can use your reaction to cast a spell at the creature rather than making an opportunity attack Warcaster might be a good one for her, too, then. Um, skilled could always work. Uh, but she does have a Jill of all trades. She doesn't have dark vision, so Skulker could help in dim light. We can always give her rich... Uh, no, bards get rituals. Never mind. <laughs> Um, which phrase, oh sheeps? She could be alert. Uh, alert and observant are two excellent feats as well. Um, oh, Jill of all trades. <laughs> yeah. 
Martial Adept could be interesting. Because this could help her with her survivability. You have martial training that allows you to perform special combat maneuvers. You gain the following benefits. You learn two maneuvers of your choice from among those available to the Battlemaster archetype. Uh, if a maneuver requires a make it a saving throw, then we'll, we could use our dex or strength. Uh, if you already have superiority dice, you gain one more. Otherwise, you have one superiority die, which is a d6. It uh, can be used to fuel your maneuvers. The superiority die is expended when you use it. You regain it uh, on a short or a long rest. So this could give her two maneuvers and uh, one die to use so she can do like a, a fun trick in combat. <laughs> there you go, everyone. You've heard it first from Raven. Uh, he is a uh, he is a, a Durganborn now. Keen mind, contact. Uh, oh, time. That's right. Direction and detail. You always know which way is north. Number of hours left, and you can accurately call anything you've seen or heard. All right. Well, I like Inspiring Leader. Actor could work for the Eloquence Bard as well. Skilled in Mimicry and Dramatics, you gain the following benefits. Advantage on Charisma, Deception, and Performance checks when trying to pass as a different person. You can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures. You must have heard the person speaking or a creature make the sound for at least a minute. I wonder if that would help her carousing. Yeah, what's up, O'Sheeps? She's been on all sorts of ships, talked to people. Actor might work. Let's give her actor as well. She's an eloquent bard. Yeah, put it in um uh put it in talent for hire, oh sheeps. Or you know, something that would be super gross. Actor seems normal, but you know what? It, it seems a little cheesy. If we gave her a uh, tough. If we gave her tough. Let's do that. She's already getting bonus. Uh. She's already getting uh, bonus uh, uh, hit points off of um, off of being a draconic uh, bloodline. She's gonna get even more from being tough, and she's definitely a tough cookie, uh, given everything that she's been through. All right, so if we do this, uh, neither of these are going to improve her, her scores here. And so let's drop in the standard array. Absolutely, charisma. She is all about that charisma. She's also a hearty soul. She sailed. She survived. Uh, she's a survivor. She's not going to give up. Uh, she's a survivor. She's going to keep on surviving. And so I think this is going to be her spread. After her racial bumps, this is going to give a 15 dex, a 15 con. And there we go. And now from her four ASIs, two were taken by feats. We're going to get to put four points into her character. And so with that, I believe that we can... Uh, 
Let's go Charisma 16. And put uh, two more points. So she has an 18 in Charisma. And one in Constitution to bring that up. Oh, cool combo, Bubonic. Hi, 12 for 10. Good evening to you. So she only has the four. Now, of course, if we took Actor instead, you know, that would free up one more Charisma that we could use to put into Dexterity, um, which is fine. You know, if you want to if you want to replace Inspiring Leader because this makes you itchy, seeing that we don't get that bump to three for Dex, I understand. You can replace Inspiring Leader with Actor. Um, either can work, right? Her friends can... Uh, her friends can rely on her, and you could say, well, so instead of spreading outward uh, benefits, maybe just that they can rely on her to sneak or to evade or to pretend to be someone else. Or because she's selfish, you can even say, uh, you can say that uh, in, in as inspiring leader, um, in this case, you know, when someone encourage, or, uh, questions my courage, I never back down. And so if we did that, instead of being the inspiring leader towards other people in that regard, if you made it actor and she had that, then it would that would free up that one extra bump to give her a 16 dex. I will also say that if you ever have one free floating, you can always pop it into your strength score because your strength score provides mechanical benefits to your character. Even going from an 8 to a 9, your modifier is still negative 1, but you still get benefits from having a 9. But let's say we go with this. All right? We're, we're going to make her a little bit more selfish, although inspiring leader is still something to consider. Zero strength... Three dex, three con, minus one int, one wisdom, and four charisma. What? Well, hey, you'll see in a second what uh, what we're talking about, Raven. Um, and so this is going to give her strength saving throw zero. Athletics is going to be six. Dexterity saving throw is a nine. Acrobatics are going to be six. And the reason for that is she is a Jill of all trades. So she gets half her proficiency bonus to skills in which she is not proficient. Con saving throw is three. Intelligence saving throw is minus one. However, all her skills are going to be twos. Wisdom saving throw is a one with a four animal handling insight medicine. And now this is going to get super gross. As she is gonna, she has expertise in perception and survival, so that's twice proficiency plus her modifier. So she's gonna have a thirteen perception and a thirteen survival. Charisma saving throw is ten. Uh, this is going to be a seven deception, seven persuasion, and intimidation is going to be sixteen. Performance is sixteen. Uh, her armor class will be 16 if she's not wearing armor because she has the black dragon scales, which are 13 plus dex. Initiative is a dex check, and of course we're not proficient, meaning that we get half of our proficiency bonus to it. So she is super twitchy and goes on a plus six. Current hit points, are you ready for some fun? Uh, because... At, uh, at level 1, she gets the full 8 from her D8 hit die of Bard. Then for her remaining 13 levels of Bard, she gets half plus 1 of her hit die, which is 5, right? Half of 8 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Then for all 6, she doesn't get the full 6 at level 1 Sorcerer. The level 1 is just at character level 1, right? Um... At, uh, she gets six levels of half plus one of a D6 hit die, which is four. Then, for all her levels, all 20 levels, she gets, bon she gets a bonus hit point for every level for being a, uh, a uh, draconic sorcerer. With the tough feat... She gets two extra hit points. Right? Da -da -da. Mm 
what this means is that she gets three every level. And, oh, there's another plus. For all her levels, she gets more bonus hit points equal to her constitution modifier. And so here we go. So we have 60 plus 60 plus 24 plus 45 plus 8. So here we have 120. And here we have, uh, here, for uh, oh sheeps out here, 45 plus 24. She has uh, 69. Though that's only going to last a little bit here as we go to 77. So she has 197 hit points as a bard sorcerer. If she's using a strength or thrown weapon, that's going to be a plus six. If she's using a ranged or finesse weapon, that's a plus nine. If she's attacking, she gets a plus 10 to hit. And to save against her effects is going to be an 18. And remember, she can impose disadvantage on that, which is mathematically you need a 23. Because it, uh, advantage or disadvantage is a plus or minus five statistically statistically doesn't always work that way though right oh and by the way her passive perception 23 if she's not naturally aware of what's going on if she doesn't hear what people are saying or, or talking about if she doesn't she can actually smell what the rock is cooking every time and doesn't need to be asked by the way she has earned a name everyone she's no longer a pile of numbers uh, she is an amazing character who would be super fun to play. And now we come down here for our spellcasting ability. Well, quink, uh, what a quinky dink. Charisma is both bard and sorcerer. And so we're going to share the same attack bonus of plus 10 and a save of 18. Of course, we have our sork points here. We get six of them. And then we get uh, bard. And Sorcerer. Well, Raven, that, that's fine if you want to propose that. Uh, it's. I don't think she's paranoid. She's very assertive, very dominant. And so she listens to what's going on and looks for opportunity, looks for ways to assert herself. And if not through combat or even through being rude, uh, a rude, crude dude. She might just want to, I want to be friends with you. We're going to be friends. And I don't think you understand. You don't have an option. As a full caster at uh, level 20, because both bards and sorcerers are full casters, we have spell slots equal to that. However, you are going to find that um, the spells that we get are going to be different. Well, I mean, not just our spell list, but uh, for example... Spells known as a bard, we got, we're going to go up to 14th level. And so we can have up to a 7th level bard spell. However, we'll never get 8th or 9th. We have the spell slots, but we aren't high enough in that class or sorcerer to get that high level of, of magic. So if we come down here, spells known at 1st level are 4. And so I'm going to call this uh, bard level 1. Two, three, four. Then we know, then we get another spell at two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then at level 10, we go from 12 to 14. And so that's magical secrets down here. At 11, we get a spell. 
And then at 13, we get a spell. And then at 14, you'll notice, that's when we get our other two magical secrets. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember also, uh, with when you have a, a fixed spell list caster like this, when you level up, you can swap out spells. Um, you know, if, if you have this uh, third level spell uh, that isn't doing anything for you, and you level up to level eight, you can, I don't know, give yourself a level one spell that you think would be cool. Um, or swap it out for a different third level spell. You do have some flexibility on level ups. Uh, the, so what you're seeing here, I'm just presenting what you'd get if you just sort of rode what you could get at the levels you could get it. And of course, these four down here in the, um, uh, you know, uh, the, our magical secrets, these could be another cantrip. These could be level one spells. They could be, uh, as long as you have the spell slot for it, it could be from any class and count as a bard spell. Um, so these could be anywhere. I'm just putting them in the corner to show that we have them. They don't have to be level four or five or whatever spells. And that this is why it's important. So you have to have a spell uh, that you you have you can be able to. Oh wait, would that mean? Would that mean we could use magical secrets to cheese a level eight and ninth? No, 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 no. We, uh, I don't think that would be. I don't think we could do that. Must be of a of a level. No, it says must be of a level you can cast. Oh, but it shows as as per on the bard table. So I think that's where it'd be pinched. As as a bard of fourteenth level, we can only cast up to seventh uh, up to seventh level spells. So we have the slots, but I don't think uh, magic uh, magical secrets would let us do that. I don't think that's the case, Bubonic. Uh, even on a level up, like if we if we seeded them like in first level, like super, we know she can cast these, and she leveled up. I I because these these we got through multi classing, um. So the these are not um, I I, I don't know like, I I've a, I I think it would be cool, maybe bards have the flexibility. Uh, is there someone out there that might be able to find some sort of errata? Or an FAQ regarding magical secrets and, and multi-classing into casting at higher level spells. I'd appreciate it if, if one of you could uh, try and find something like that. All right. Anyway, while that's happening, and of course we have our four bard cantrips up here. Now let's go to our sorcerer. And we get six levels of that. So we have our five cantrips. Uh, so we get a uh, sorcerer. Sorcerer level one, we know two spells. So there's our two spells. Then at level three, or I'm sorry, level two, three, four, five, six. And so you see how I, I segregate this so we know from which uh, from which lists we can pull our spells. Um, you... Okay, uh, can you... Can you let me know what the result of that is, Bubonic, since I, I have this stuff open right now? Hey, Risky. No, hey, thank you. It's It's been a little while. I hope that you guys have been uh, doing very well over on your channel. This stay classy, Waterdeep. Yeah. Hey, thanks for stopping by, saying hi, uh, putting some eyeballs on the channel, Luke. Um, and I, I please uh, spread my, my love and well-wishing uh, to you all uh, as I, I, I miss seeing y'all on the, on the normal feed. Uh, but absolutely... Uh, our, 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 
our love and our camaraderie uh, for beer and storytelling and role playing and history. Uh, it is it is very strong, Luke. Hey, Grimvex. Good morning to you. Uh, and of course, uh, unless I miss something in, a, in the, the super recent errata, metamagic, you can just use this on a spell that you cast, not necessarily a sorcerer spell. So we can twist a, a bard spell. Oh, question asked whether a character can use a spell slot. Uh, an elven wizard who learns Misty Step by taking the Fey Teleportation feat. Use a wizard spell slot to cast Misty Step because Misty Step is on the wizard spell list. I don't know if that's... Th this is specifically an interaction with magical secrets. Yeah, so uh, so uh, Disfemis, that, that's what I was thinking is by multi-classing, yes, we get the spell slots, but these are like multi-class spell slots that are opened up. They're not bard spell slots and they're not sorcerer spell slots. So we can ramp up, we can ramp up our spells through them, but they don't unlock. I, I don't think that magical secrets would allow us to move or, or, or to, you know, or to even move a sorcerer. Uh, spell slot there because it's not sorcery at that level. It's just a magic potential at that level. Coffee Cat, have an awesome night. Thank you for hanging out with us. Subtle, vicious mockery is the best, says Santa. So he's a sort of, you know... <laughs> Yeah, so it, it it seems to just be opening up the slots, uh, but it doesn't, uh, but it won't allow us to take an eighth or a, magical secrets won't allow us to take an eighth or a ninth, because these are fueled by our magic potential combined of sorcerer and bard, but they're not, they're not allowing for those those level spells just simply heighten magic of lower levels. Yep, exactly. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Luke. Hey! Risk brewing gloves, Matty Mort, and so shall do. Subscribe, people. Subscribe, people. Luke, you speak with a magnificent female Welsh accent. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, and, uh, here, I'm gonna... You get the cheers, and you get the love. Bonsoir, mon ami. Bon nuit. Yeah, so uh, your magical secret or another spell wouldn't be 8th or ninth level, because you're not able to cast that as a bard. Though you have the potential because of the, the way that they weave together. <laughs> Cheers! Excellent, excellent, everyone. Good workshop. Uh, it's good to ask questions, get confirmation. Uh, by the way, she still needs a name, everyone. So let me know what you think about that. I I need to get up and take a uh, and and take a uh, a powder my nose break. So I will be back in a little bit here. Everyone, get a snack, a drink. Uh, as sheeps will tell you. Well, she'll tell you what she tells you. Yes, yeah, from the bar table or the sorcerer. Um, so we get the potential of the higher levels. We don't get the we don't get the spells. I don't know if UA is included in Beyond Raven, but I also don't do deep dives into that site to be able to tell you. I vote Sierra for a name, but I may be biased here. 
Well, I mean, so we had someone mention what McFly. Uh, we have another uh, suggestion for Sierra. Um, and if any of you have any other uh, recommendations, then... All right, coffee, be well. Uh, I'll find them when we take our break, but I, I got to get up and we'll be back. Uh, refresh yourselves and we'll meet again. <laughs> 